Welcome back to the Fish and Coach Show. I'm Brandon Fisher. This is Coach Ratner. And today we have a really exciting special edition episode all about birthright trips. I'm so excited about this. I have so many friends that have gone on birthright and they love it. It's an unbelievable trip. It's a trip of a lifetime. It's so much fun. It yeah. honestly was the first time I did a trip by myself. Uh, I did it my sophomore year of college, which was 2013. I yeah. feel so old. Yeah. But I loved the trip. It was the first time seeing all these old sites, all these like historic sites that I have a, a connection to. Uh, it's unlike anything else. So where do they go? So where are you going to go on your birthright trip and what should you be looking forward to? But first, Coach, let's talk about what it even means. What does birthright even mean and why are we given this free trip to Israel? Why? Because it's because it is our, our land. The land of Israel is the Jewish homeland. In fact, you know, when the state of Israel was founded in 1948, or before 1948, some had tried to make it that Uganda was going to be the next Jewish homeland. Wow. It didn't, didn't work out very well. But the reason why Israel is a homeland, because it says in the Torah that this is, there's specific boundaries that the land of Israel is in, and it contains the land of Israel. It would have been so interesting to see how Uganda would have developed. I don't know if it would have been quite the same thing because you wouldn't have the passion because it's not, that's not the land that the Torah says was given to the Jewish people. Right, so you it's know. just a space for us to congregate. Basically. In fact, in fact, you think about it right now. Like if some country like Russia said, we're going to give you a piece of you know, the, the, the Siberia or America or Canada, so we're going to give you a piece of land and, and cha- in exchange for that, you give the land to the Arabs. They can have that. There'll be no more Middle East war and Jews can live in peace. In the middle of Canada. In the middle of Canada and it in the north. Peaceful. We, we'd have skiing. It'd be great, yeah. right? But the, but the issue is that, that that's not the land that the Torah says was given to the Jewish people. So there you go. Now you're ringing in that there's, there's something to this specific and, piece of land. And it's not that the Jews were there first. Right. Because, you know, just like in America, say, if you say, well, the Jews were there first, they should have the land. That's not true. Because mm-hmm. in America, we know the Indians were there before us. What right. are you going to do? Give back Denver to the Indians? Right. You know, no, but the, the Torah says the Canaanites were here first. The Jews weren't even here first, but the Torah says that this is our land. You know, Coach, in Canada, I, I don't know if it's a law or if it's a custom. I know it's also a thing in some places in America where at any sporting event or any event you're hosting, you must say, and right now we are on this Native American tribal land really first so you're acknowledging the heritage of the land yes so coach what would happen if we did that for israel i mean if we went to uganda no 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 if we did it here on this land and we said we just want to recognize that this land used to belong to you know how long the list is it would be going back to the 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 well it's just the canaanites that was it no that's if you go way back i'm just saying if you start from now oh go back to who's lifting the british the ottomans the turks (laughs) syrians (laughs) greeks Romans, I mean, like so many people have lived here. It's amazing. But the funny thing is, where are the civilizations right now? Like, wh- wh- how many Romans have you had dinner with recently? <laughs> I mean, like, like, what, what, what's like, what do you do in Greece besides go visit M- Mykonos and you know? That besides that, what's the Greece have? And it's olives, obviously. It's olives and stuff, stuffed uh, grape leaves. You, you know, know I, I can't criticize Greek food. They, no, they I love Greek. Great, food. I love gyro. Who doesn't love a good gyro with lots of garlic sauce on it? Right. right. So, speaking of Greece, since that is in Rome and all these ancient civilizations, they've got amazing places to see over there. When you go to Rome, you see the Colosseum. When you go to Greece, you see the Parthenon. And it's an amazing piece of history. History. And let's get into our history. Let's get into our history because we have even older. Yes. We're right here and in Israel right now. We're in Jerusalem. But we're going to talk about where we are last. I just want to say one thing. When I'm in, in, in Alexandria, Virginia, which is an ancient, ancient, it's a, it's a <laughs> city, it's 200 years old, 250 years old, and they find a piece of pottery that's 200 years old. They stop the digging, and like they, 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 they start doing the excavation to find out who, who was living there. 200 years old, 250 years old. Here, you're going to be walking around in the desert and in places, and you're going to be kicking pottery that's two to 3,000 years old, and guess what? No one cares. Right. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Two to 3,000 years old. It's not even close. <laughs> 2,000 years old is already young. I know. Okay. So it's amazing. Let's, Let's start, though, with the most modern city yeah. uh, that you'll be visiting in your birthright trip, Tel Aviv. Yeah. It's a city of innovation. It's, um, it, it is like a modern day. It's almost like being an American city. You wouldn't right. even realize that you're in, like, in Israel besides the fact that like, everyone's speaking Hebrew. But it is a, it's such a modern city. There's modern buildings. The architecture is amazing. The, 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 it is actually, Tel Aviv is now considered the most expensive city in the world. Wow. Yeah. And that's a result of their real estate. Massive, well, real Ma- estate, real estate course, and their buildings still. They cannot, yeah. You cannot keep up with the real estate 
demand that there is in Israel. But it also has to do with the fact that it's such an appealing city for tech companies. Tech, all the tech, in fact, you know, I believe it was the Pentium chip, it was uh, uh, Intel. During the, one, of the, one of the wars where lots of rockets were flying, Intel was inventing the Pentium chip, and they said their employees were coming to work every day with rockets flying, and the innovation wow. here is just unbelievable. There's so much passion here. It, the, the Israeli people are just a passionate, and the Jewish people in general, are just a passionate people. Right. They want to get things done. They want, really, it's in, it's in our kishkas, it's in our guts, in order to improve the world. When we see something that we can do better, yeah. it's in our bones to do it better. Yeah. And that comes from the, the whole mindset of, of just being in Israel, and that's yeah. seen most clearly in Tel Aviv. Yeah, and plus, you know, we had, I hate to say the chip on their shoulder, but, you know, we had no country 2,000 years, and we get our country back, and, like, we don't want to lose it again, right? right? So we're doing everything in the world to make ourselves needed, and one of the most important things in life is to have meaning and purpose, and you have that meaning and purpose when you're needed. And when you create a water system that can save billions of gallons of water a year by, by uh, air, drip irrigation, or you can make a life-saving drug like cancer or arthritis, whatever it is, that's coming out of Israel, you're needed. Right. I mean, can you imagine, you know, the fact that they, we have these countries that are at war with Israel or constantly battling Israel, if they just made peace with Israel, what, like, they could get out of it? In the last five years. I mean, just look, I, I just, I just, I'm, it just makes me sick to my stomach that the, the Gaza Strip, which is the Palestinians live in, they could have had tons of unbelievable, not just, I'm not talking like resorts, but like they, they, they have such a beautiful piece of land. It's, it's, it's fertile. It's near the ocean, the most beautiful ocean in the world. And they could have done so much with it. Instead, they've done nothing. The Mediterranean Sea on that note is so beautiful. It is unbelievable, the yes. The beach in Tel Aviv is something that I don't know if Birthright gets to all, if all the trips get to go there. If you have the opportunity, though, just sit in the sand and just enjoy that sunset. Yeah, it's a spectacular sunset. And just like going to the library in Tel Aviv is, is just an event itself. It's really? so I've beautiful. Never been to the library. Yeah, it's so beautiful, and there's chairs everywhere, and it's got Wi-Fi, and it's, it's just being in Tel Aviv is being in a modern, a very modern city where everyone's friendly. Yeah. They well, are. they can be rude too, but in general, it's a they're culture. friendly. It's, it's a culture. Really Israeli culture. It's not they're, they're not being rude because they want to be rude. It's just they're Israelis are like um, they just tell the truth. They're not like they don't say hi to say hi. Like they're like. They tell you, you know, you smell a little bit. They'll tell you what they think. They don't. They're not going to hold anything back. So it might come across, especially to us lazy Americans, that we're that they're being rude, but they're not. They just tell the truth. You don't. There's no. There's no make believe. There's no baloney here. And it's out of love. It's because they, everyone here feels like they're family. They want to help you. They do. I right. get so much advice all constantly, all the time. People are giving me advice for whatever I'm doing, and like. I'm like, just leave me alone. But they want to help you. Uh, it's a thing that you can leave your stroller outside and say, hey, can you watch my stroller to yeah. a stranger? And they'll watch your baby. They really do. I see it all do. the time. I, yeah. It's shocking. And I, I see people like on the buses. Some lady has like two or three little kids and she has a problem. She, she literally take her baby and hand it to the woman next to her. She doesn't know her on the bus. She hold her for a second. Like that doesn't happen in America. That does not happen in no. America. Actually, it's, so it's much so help unique. with them. Yeah, it, it, really, it, it's amazing because everyone's, no, not everybody, but majority of people here are Jewish. Right. You know, it's, it's, and we are one family. And it feels like when you come home to Israel that you are part of a family. And that's part of the name birthright. It does right. feel like you're coming home to your people, to mm -hmm. your family. Right. Even if you're, you know, not practicing in any way, shape, or form right. your Jewish identity, it's inside of us. Yeah. And just being here, you feel connected to those roots. That's right. So number two we want to talk about is Tzfat. Uh, the odds are you're going to go up north on your trip, and you'll probably see the Golan Heights. You'll see winery. You might stop at a winery, maybe go jeeping. Um, but Sfat is really, it's my favorite city in Israel. Did you know that, Coach? Yes, I knew that. Yeah. You're there all the time. I go there as often as possible. You only get to go there for about two hours and like, oh, wow, this is Sfat. And that's kind of the birthright feel. Like, right. hey, look at this, look at this. That's my feeling, Sfat. I've never really spent a lot of time there. Right. But I hear so many people love Sfat. Yeah. It's and the, the people there are so cool. Like, they're so cool. Very down to earth. Very I, it's crunchy. It's I crunchy. I wouldn't word. call them down to earth at all, but definitely crunchy. Yeah. But they're really not. They are the opposite of down to earth. They right. live in the clouds. Right. Time literally doesn't exist there. I stayed at a hotel and none of the clocks worked. And uh, that just confirmed like no one shows up on time. No one cares. No one cares. And that's fine. It's it's um, I don't want to say hippie. It's Jewish spiritual. Yeah. And um, what you'll learn there, you'll get, you'll get connected with ancient synagogues that, of Rabbi Luria and some of the most famous and greatest rabbis ever. I went into the um, Arya Mikvah. The Mikvah oh, is a, yeah. a Jewish spiritual bath where you go and cleanse yourself. 
and it comes out of the mountain. Yeah. And it's cold, and people, literally people are lined up there. This, this bat, there's, there's a men's mikvah, which is in a cave in the mountain, which right. is really cool because right. when do you ever take all your clothes off and jump into a cave with a bunch of other men? But they have towels <laughs> and everything. It sounds so appealing. Huh? But it's really cool because you, it's very chilling, and the water's so clean and fresh, and it is very cleansing. And the women's have a mikvah. The women have a mikvah that's one of the most beautiful in the world. I have been right, right, right up the hill from it. Of course, you've been there. I went there on the tour, and we saw it. It, yeah. really, it really is like... It's like being at a Four Seasons Hotel. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the guys, is not like that. No, no. When we went there on my birthright trip, my rabbi said, if you're worried about where we're going, don't worry. Uh, if you're worried about having um, a bathing suit, don't worry. You won't need one. <laughs> right. If you're worried about a towel, don't worry. We'll have one for yeah. you. And I'm like, okay. But the thing with this mikvah and what makes it so unique, unlike any other body of water, like the Mediterranean, which you're going to see before that, is that the Arizal, who is one of the, the original Kabbalists, one of the greatest Kabbalists of all time, besides, I guess, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who wrote the Zohar, is uh, he said that anyone who goes into this water, it's as if they had never sinned a day in their life. So you come out of there feeling completely pure no matter what you've done. It's such a spiritual experience. And people that live there probably go in there. Some people probably go in every day. Every day. I'm sure. And then some people go in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Like I go to the mikveh every Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, mm -hmm. and maybe sometimes before other major holidays. But some people, I know where I live in Rehavi, Sharon Chesed, there are people who go every single day into the mikveh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more thing about Spot. It's a great place to look at art. Just a secret of the pros. The wine cups and like some of the, uh, the uh, Judaica is, is mainstream. So you just have to be careful that you're not getting the mainstream stuff at three times the price. Sure. And that's going to be the case remember, everywhere you, you go. You are a tourist. And there are, you know, this is the Middle East, which is the tendency to try to take advantage of the person who's not from there, and believe me, you will get taken advantage. It's part of the, it's part right. of the thing, part of the game of being here and, and haggling back and forth of prices. As soon as they see your lanyard, they say special tugly rip, spe special tugly discount, which <laughs> yeah. means special tugly, tugly rip, rip off. off. Right. <laughs> so be careful about that. But it is a great place to buy unique art. Yeah. The art there is is special. The artists are great people. And it's a really fun place to be walking around. Totally, it's yeah. you're gonna feel the food's like great you're too. somewhere else. And the, the food's, food's also great. really amazing. Yeah, and you're at the top of a mountain. It's like it's really right. it's just in, in Israel. And it's actually one of the four holiest cities in Israel. That's right. You know, being one Sfat, one Hebron, and one Jerusalem, and then of course uh, Tiberias. Tiberias, right? The city of water. Right. Sfat is the city of air. Jerusalem is the city of fire. And Hebron, where you will not go on your birthright trip, is the city of earth. That's okay. where um, our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are buried. Okay, let's talk about City Hall. City Hall. Where is City Hall? City Hall is in Tel Aviv, and this is the place where in 1948 that the Jewish state was declared. How interesting is and that? And I tell you, I went there, and I, of course I went there, okay, this is going to be boring. It's like history. Like I'm telling you, I was so blown away about what happened and how, I don't remember everything when I saw the trip, but it was it really, it was just a miracle, the fact that a Jewish state after 2,000 years, and especially after the Holocaust, that they were able to form, barely by the UN vote, barely, barely. Yeah. Uh, uh, form, Miraculously. Form, miraculously form a Jewish state. And, of course, the Arabs were offered a state also. The Palestinians, they didn't take it. We're not going to get into that political side of it. <laughs> that side of it. But um, they didn't take the state, and so the Jewish state was born. And, of course, what's the first thing that happened? As soon as, as, soon as it happened, we had an independence war. We had a war. Every single country attacked Israel. You know, we have a young nation, which I think at the time was less than a million people living here. Most likely. And they were living. It was not like it is now where you come and you have nice hotels and modern day conveniences and running water. It was, there was malaria here. There was, you couldn't get like good ice cream. It was very difficult to get things into here because there was a blockade for many, many years. And it was very hard to live here. It's not like there was water. It's, we were in a desert. It was really a desert. There were no trees. It was right. not like it looks like when you're going to you, be on your birthright trip. You could not. It was hard to grow anything. Yeah. It was very difficult, which is funny because in the Bible it says that when the Jews get kicked out of their land, which they did 2,000 years ago, that land will become fallow. You won't be able to grow anything, which, which happened. I mean, it there's really so happened. many stories of historians coming into Israel in the 17th and 1800s, and they're, they're, you couldn't grow anything here. Right. But guess what is happening now? It's called the land of milk and honey. Do you know why? Because that's I, the Bible says that you'll, the Jews will come back, which we did in 1948, and you'll be able to make the land thrive, which they do. Right. We, the, Israel is now an exporter of water and of, of lots of fruits and vegetables. It's really amazing. So City Hall, is just, historically, is just a really, really cool place to go to.
Wow. I yeah. actually have not been there. Yeah, you got to take the I tour. You have to go. It's so much, so much amazing history. Wow. And I made a documentary. I was on the team that made a docu- documentary about Menachem Begin. Menachem Begin. That was, right. that was well after that. But he was part of, he was instrumental in yeah, the sure. of the state. Was D- David Ben-Gurion was one of the part. One, he was, was the other yeah. side of it. Right. Yeah. So next you're going to head to maybe the Dead Sea? Yeah, the Dead Sea. You've heard of the Dead Sea. Maybe you've definitely seen pictures of the people reading the newspaper floating in the water. Yeah. And by the way, it's true. They do that. They do that, yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's great. You should bring a newspaper and you should take that picture. Yeah. But don't bring the phone into the water. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't have an open wound. Um, yeah, what I, else? I, I, went, I went through it. It hurts. It does. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't yeah. do that. Don't. There's a lot of things that your birthright trip will make sure you know not to do yeah. before the trip, and it's serious. <laughs> it's definitely, do it. you definitely have to do You have to go into the water. Never yeah. the it's so cool. It's just not like refreshing like being in a nice cool ocean with waves because it's kind of flat but it is so cool you just literally float and it's full of salt and holds you up yeah it's more spotty than huh? um it's spot like yeah spotty yeah right it's yeah. like a spa it's very yeah. it's very warm water yeah and it's very hot over there you yeah. need a lot of water over there yeah. but it's it's something that's unlike anywhere else in the world and what city used to be over there before many years Sodom. ago Sodom, which was funny because Sodom, the Sodom was stored was destroyed by by fire, right? Yeah, it was fire, by brimstone. fire. And in in the Bible, the story in the Bible was that when Lot and his wife left, God said, "Don't turn around." And she turned around. It says she turned to a pillar of salt. Right. So you will see Lot's wife there when you go to the Dead Sea. You'll like, see there history is in front a of you. That says where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll see like where they they think where they think it is. Right. Right. Sure. Not Interestingly, really. there's a mountain down there that's right now is covered under soil or sand. Yeah. But if you go deep enough, the whole mountain is just salt. Oh, it you is. Know that? No, I yeah, didn't know that. That's a really cool thing. Yeah. And they sell the they sell the mud and the Dead Sea salt. You buy all these things are supposedly right. very cleansing for you. Of course, it has turned to a business. So you will see, like, it, as most things do, it turns into a business, and right. they, they try to sell you stuff. It's fine, but it's great. I love the Dead Sea mud. Yeah, the I mud do. is so much fun. Yeah. If you have the chance, put it all over yourself. It's yeah. clean. It's like, and it's, they have showers and everything. It's not like you, they, they right. have all the showers and towels, and you, you'll be set up, and they have dressing rooms and yeah. yeah. And they have really nice hotels down there too. Really, it's changed so much. It's like a resort area. Like, yeah. yeah, we went down there for we spent the night down. I was like the best food. Oh my! Of course, wow. everything about food. Everything's about food. <laughs> but it was and really nice hotels. Very very nice hotels. Yeah, yeah. It's so a great after place. that, you might go to. And after that, you'll go to Matsada, or you'll start the day. A lot of groups like to do the morning hike on right. Matsada. Yeah. So if you get to the top for sunrise. It's a hot day. I've yeah. been on five organized trips to. to Matsada, yeah. and I've never hiked up it. The rest of the trips did. I, I ran the first. The, I, I ran up Masada. I was, wow. I was, like, I was like thirty or something. I was running a lot then, and I ran up the whole mountain. Of yeah, Masada. it wasn't that well, hard. It wasn't. It wasn't. No, walking Whatever. up takes a couple hours though. No, no, no. I think it's forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. Okay, yeah, it's forty-five. Okay, so it's, I've never done it. I took the cable a snake car. trail goes like this, and cable car takes you know five ten minutes. It's a really neat city though. So it's a whole city, an ancient city that was built on top of this. I guess it's a mountain. mountain. It was a mountain. It was a flat, flat, flat top. top. Yeah, yeah, flat top mountain. And there's um, unbelievable things on top. You'll see ruins from 2,000 years ago when, uh, right when our temple was being destroyed. What were we using it for? We, well, the Romans were killing all the Jews. <laughs> Never heard of that before. And uh, they, Jews ran to Masada and built the city there to protect themselves. And they held out for I don't know how many years. You'll find that out when you go. Right. You let me know. Might have been thirty. Uh, they they held out for they, they, but the thing is, they built mikvahs. They had a shul, and the crazy thing about it, when you go up there now, there are tons of bar mitzvahs up there. I was up there for a bar mitzvah. And yeah. there's, a shul, there's the original shul that's over two thousand years old. Wow. And there's a guy it's up there now in a room that's air conditioned. It's kind of funny. This little rabbi writing Torah scrolls up on the top of Masada. Oh, that's so beautiful. And oh. if, unfortunately, what happened was the Romans built a giant ramp. It took them many years. They built this ramp, and they they end up uh, they end up. The story goes, by the way, that the Jews committed suicide. I'm, I'm not so sure that's the truth. We don't really know. There's been no evidence of it. It's just, it's just what they say. Yeah, maybe your tour guide will tell you something. Yeah. It's, it's a history that's worth knowing. It's a fascinating story. It's, yeah. it's really the Jewish Alamo. Right. It is Jewish Alamo. It's the it last, one of the last strongholds that we had. Then you might go down, since you're already somewhere close to the desert, you might head down to the Negev. Right. And in the Negev, what you're going to see, it might not sound so interesting, but the, it, it is literally miracle what they've done to the negative because you have a place where there's no, almost no rain and there's no water yet they're making the desert bloom 
It's beautiful down there. It's unbelievable what they've able to do. They, they're, Israel is the number one country about in, in developing called drip irrigation. Drip irrigation just isn't a hose, which I used to think. It's just a hose with holes in it. No, it's a system where they have um, stoppers in the holes that go up and down, up and down. So when you let the water through the hose, a drop comes out of each hole and goes right to the plant, roots of the plant. Just one, or, just one or two drops per per plant. Pretty much Where, what it needs. It's what it needs. But when you dose. like, you know, when I'm at home watering the plants, you take a hose, you go, Psh, and you're wasting like, you know, thirty gallons of water to water like twelve plants, and they use like a cup of water to water twelve plants. And so, the very little water is needed, and they recycle all the water. I know the city of Beersheba, which is in the south, ninety eight percent of that water is reused into into the um, industry for for growing plants. That is un. Heard of ninety eight percent of your wow. when you like when you go to the bathroom ninety percent of that water is recycled to use for plants. Wow. I mean that's not a little gross, but they they filter it like they filter it. But is that amazing? Yeah, yeah. And, See, and and they also have salinization plants. The salinization plants also take water from the Mediterranean Sea, and they I think Israel is also like maybe number one in the world in salinization of water yeah, we're, from we're salt up water. There. Yeah, because we have one source of natural water that's there all year round, pretty much. Yeah, that's the Sea of Galilee. That's it. Yeah, the, the Sea of Galilee. That's it. But then we have this big Mediterranean that's got a ton of water, and we've just found out how to maximize and turn that water into drinking yeah. water. Even. And this is all probably all probably thought of that in Tel Aviv, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And there's other places in Tel Aviv that also do this, but just because we said that it's a city of innovation. There's a lot of innovation. Haifa's got a high tech center. Herzliya has a right. high tech center. There's so many, so much high tech going on here. So many start. Everyone here is involved in some sort of startup. If you want to get a job, come move to Israel. There's tons of people needed for all these startups, especially if you are a software yeah, engineer. High paying, high paying. I have jobs. a friend. I have a friend who like you know he was a rabbi, and, you know, struggling as because they don't make a lot of money, and he took coding in Tel Aviv. Wow. He got a job, and he can't believe how much money he's making. Like this guy's, no one in his family has ever made this much money before. And he's like, wow. he's like, he's like, he was mid-20s. He didn't know how to code. He knew nothing about computers. So learned to code for like a year or two. Was set up with a job as an as a intern. And three months later, they hired him. Amazing. It's an amazing story. That's so cool. There's so much opportunity here, really. Right. And you see that most in the desert where it started yeah. out. You can obviously know it's a desert. And now there's cities there. There's solar panels. There's everything. And, and there's no the thing here. Like even the, in where he, this rabbi works in Tel Aviv, even though not everyone's an observant Jew, 90% of them are Jewish. So right. they're not, you know, like, they're not working on television. They're not working. You don't have to, like, go into work. Hey, I need to take off Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. Like, they were not working anyway. The national you know? holidays. Yeah, maybe they were some holidays. Right? Right. It's national Right. All of you holidays. Even, even, like, a holiday like uh, Lagba Omer. Yeah. Which is not even. Were, were they off for Lagba Omer? I think it's a, I think it's a national holiday. Wow. I, I don't, I didn't see any. I think it's a national holiday. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. You'll love the desert. The Negev is beautiful. You'll probably ride camels, stay with the Bedouins. The, the amazing thing about Israel is that it's, it's such a small country. It, it, it's small. I think it's small in New Jersey, right? But, uh, yeah. it, but it has so many different aspects of weather. You have the desert in the south. You have the you have the rain, the mountains, ma- rain, uh, the rain in the mountains. You have snow in the mountains. You have snow winter. in the mountains. And then when you go to the north, you have Mount Hermon with skiing. Right. They're skiing. skiing. Yeah. One thing that you should know... Um, well, sorry, one thing I wanted to mention was we did a salad tour on my birthright trip. And if you have the opportunity, it's a really cool What's it one. called? A salad, a salad tour. tour. Did you do that? We did something where you could eat lettuce and tomatoes. You just eat off the ground. You pull your own carrots. No, the, ours were in uh, water. They weren't in the oh, ground. Wow, cool. They were in, 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 in uh, greenhouses. Yeah. All growing in water. There was no dirt anywhere. And there wow. was almost no bugs. Hydroponics. Hydroponics. That's Thank right. You. And that, I think, is an exemption for Shemitah, too. Yeah, let's go to number seven. Okay, numbers. Uh, yeah, number seven is... The Western Wall. Yes, where, where we're filming on. from right now. Yeah, we're in Asia Tora. When you go to the Western Wall, just turn around and you'll see exactly where we film from. You'll, you'll see my office. Yeah, this is our <laughs> office. We yeah. spent all day here. Right outside. I'm not kidding. I'm just pointing right Why there. Why is the Western Wall? What is so great about the right Western Wall? Right there. Right. The Western Wall is a... What is it? How old is the Western Wall? 30... Oh, the Western Wall is like 2,500 years old. Yeah, and then the structures that were there before go yeah. back to 4,000 years old yeah. easily. And it is, it is considered the... Um, I would say this is considered to be the front door to spirituality. This is like, you know, people... When you, when you go to Hebrew school, they say, you know, God is everywhere or whatever. But this is where he comes down. This is like... Uh, when, you, when you're in 
let's say Chicago, Illinois. Yes, God's there, God's everywhere, but it's like listen to him on an AM radio where it's a little staticky. But when you come here, it's 3D Dolby digital, 4D Dolby digital yeah, surround real. sound. It's just, it's like your heart's open here. They, they, they talk about Jerusalem disease. You know what that is? Jerusalem disease? When yeah. people come here, I'm sorry, Jerusalem syndrome. Syndrome. Syndrome is when you come here and suddenly you think you're like, a rabbi or a, a rabbi prophet. Akiva or a prophet or Mashiach. And next thing you know, you're wearing a robe and a kippah and you're walking around, you know, meditating and like, and people think that. It, it's such a spiritual experience that there's nothing in the world, there is nowhere else in the world like it. Mm-hmm. It's the holiest place for all three religions, but definitely for us. The, 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 when, before the temple was destroyed, the temple was for the entire world. You know that? Right. This is why it's somewhat ridiculous right now that, that Jews can't pray up on the Temple Mount because this was a, the temple was for every single nation in the world. In fact, when it was thriving before the first temple was destroyed, all nations brought their, their, their animals here. They brought for sacrifices. It was like everyone came here. This was like the Las Vegas, it wasn't Las Vegas, it was like, it was like Times the Times Square. It was Times Square. More than that. It was like, Foot and mouth. What, about, what can I say? What it city is like? It was Jerusalem. It was Jerusalem. It was Jerusalem without heyday. the gambling, without the Times Square stuff going on. This is not the heyday of Jerusalem. This no. is an exciting time, and it's beautiful that we have the access. I'm sure to they have their back alley things going on. There's, I mean, there's a bar. You know, there's there's things going on in Jerusalem. I, 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 yeah, maybe. Unfortunately, there's like lots of fun going on in Jerusalem. So, I mean, there's lots of fun. If you want to have fun here, yeah. just go to the Shuk on a Thursday night. It is the most happening place in the country. Yeah, well, Thursday night, Saturday night too. It's you, wherever your birthright, whenever your birthright ship goes, you guys are going to be the party. The whole shook, it's which awesome. is like has amazing food and amazing vegetables and fruits, turns into this giant bar, and everyone's like partying all night. Everywhere. Yeah, not that I would know, but I, I heard. <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah, it gets it gets crazy. Yeah, it gets crazy. But just to bring it back to the Western Wall, you're going to get to put a note in the wall, and I recommend bringing notes from your family also because our prayers go here anyway. We say that um, when you pray, no matter where you are in the world, your prayer goes straight out of your mouth. But instead of going all the way straight to heaven, it goes straight to the, not to the Western Wall, but like right, right through the Western Wall to the, where the temple once stood, which is where the Golden Dome is now right stands, there. Now right. stands. Um, your prayer goes right there and straight to heaven. Yeah. So when you're here, you're like really at the door of spirituality. And what's really, the old city, which is right next to the, the Western Wall, if the old city was really, this was Jerusalem inside right. the walls until 1948 when every nation attacked Israel. Jordan destroyed the old city. And when Israel got it back in 1967, they came in with, cam- with camels and goats and donkeys and they built up the old city again. So when you come to the old city and it looks really old, it's really only 40, 50 years old. Right, and everything is Jerusalem stone. It looks like it's, it looks old. It and, all uh, looks old, but it's not. But even like up to 20, 30 years ago, they were using donkeys in order to build this city. Yeah, it's really crazy. It's crazy. People, I know people that remember, people yeah. that are much not old, people that are my age that live here. It's like, I remember donkeys. Now they have these little carts, these little, um, little motorized, what do they call them? Like, uh, they're, they're, we call them uh, old city mobiles because yeah. they're not designed for anything other than the old they're city. They're tiny. They're three they wheelers have, or four wheelers. Yeah, little. and because they, they go through small spaces, but they carry people's groceries yeah. and they carry furniture or whatever they have to carry. It's smaller than it's hard to, it's, It is walking here. I would suggest, by the way, wearing very, very thick soled shoes or boots. Don't so wear. Don't even bring high heels. No. You don't need that. Do not bring high easy. heels. I wouldn't even bring, maybe if, if you want to have flip flops or sandals for the beach, that's it. But do not wear them in Jerusalem, especially because walking here is difficult. I know I walk right. every day and I have to get the biggest heels I can get. Yeah. You know? Leave it. Yeah. Coach, can we make a, a special offer for our, for our fans? Yes. What is it? When you're in Jerusalem, if you want to meet with us, we would love to meet with you. Oh yeah, that you think about that. Us. Yeah, reach out DM to Fish and Coach. DM with us on the, our Instagram or um, wherever you're listening. What's our? We have an email, right? We do. I don't know it. I, think <laughs> it's the, I believe it's the Fish and Coach Show at gmail.com. Yeah, or you can go to Coach Ratner's website, CoachRatner.com. You can contact me through that. That does reach me. I do know that. Okay. I don't know if it's Coach email because we don't really use it. We can we can start. We using start it. using it though, Please and you can meet, you can meet with us. We can have a classroom. We can do a live Fish and Coach Show with you. It'll be very exciting. Yeah. Just your whole group to too. Your whole group. So yeah. that's a special request. And we'll that's buy you lunch. Offer. Wow. Yeah. We'll yeah. Lunch that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, oh. I think that sums up where you're going to go on Birthright. It's an amazing 10 days. You will get such little sleep. My biggest tip is sleep ahead of time because yeah. and sleep on the bus. Wear a hat. Wear a hat. 
bring the blanket Plus from the water. plane with you because it's better to bring it on the bring it from the plane. Are you allowed to take the to blanket? It. Um, if if you're allowed to do it. Yeah, don't don't steal it. Don't, don't steal don't it. Take it. You know, I don't. I want uh, that on me. You know, I want United suing me. Ask them if you can take the blanket and the pillow. Yeah. Um, it has in the past been okay to take. I've asked, and uh, but double check also. Yeah. And then, because you're going to be sleeping on the bus, that is your bed. Yeah. Headphones that work, that don't run out of battery, and blinders, because th- your sleeping is those three. Band-aid, bring some band aids. The band aids here are not that great. Band aids. Yeah. That's a good advice. Bring American band aids. Right. Yeah. And travel light. You don't have to bring like. There's not much you need. You really don't. You really don't. Especially coming to summertime, time, you don't need much. You know, one pair of pants for Shabbat or something, pair of shorts, and whatever you want to. But just, yeah. just wear. The key is good shoes. Good shoes. You're gonna wear them out. Yeah. <laughs> Hiking boots are ideal. Hiking sandals are great. Um, yeah. So have an amazing time. It's ten days. If you can extend, that's a life changing opportunity. Join us in Yeshiva at Aish. Do whatever you want afterwards, but extend. Yeah. You're here already. You made the trip. There's lots of stuff. You, by the way, there are places here in Jerusalem, like the Heritage House and Hostels. You can stay for like seven dollars a night, ten dollars, like nothing. Yeah. And they have programs and they have things you can do and there's Shabbats and things. So you're not going to be without meals. It's really quite. They'll set you up. Lots of things happening here. Don't miss that opportunity. Yeah, because really. we know birthright. You mean going nonstop. You know what? Stop. Smell the roses. Spend a few extra nights here. Come say hello to us. Yeah. For real, for real. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for listening to the Fish and Coach Show. Have an amazing trip. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the Fish and Coach Show. If you like what you just watched, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment with any ideas you'd like to see on any future episodes. We'll see you next time.